have several minutes to approve tonight. We have the minutes from the October 12th meeting, and I'm not sure if you guys had the opportunity to review these or not, but we have those, um, and if there are any questions, let me know. I'll take a motion to approve those from October 12th, 2021. I'll make a motion to approve the October 21st minutes. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sign, please. Oh, you got it. And thank you. Well, get some minutes here. John to sign. Okay. Wait, what's that? I haven't found that. Oh, those are yours just to review. Oh, okay. Okay. I've signed them yours. Okay. We can have that I'll back. Add that one back. All right. The second set of minutes is to approve the minutes for the um, in, uh, bonuses that we gave to uh, Julie Julie and Kevin Bennett. And those are were made to be unsealed. So we are just taking a motion to approve these minutes into record. Okay, I'll make that motion to approve those records. What are the minutes from? What is these it? are from the bonus that we gave Julie, Julie, okay. and Kevin, and we just unsealed the minutes and entered them motion into to that. That was okay. for the STR? Yes. Yeah, right. Yes. Okay, I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. There's no place on here to sign these, so we'll just sign them at the top. Uh, the next is for the October 26, 2021 minutes, which was the last meeting we had, and that is to approve those minutes. I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. The second. All in favor? Ah. Aye. Aye. minutes. What am I looking at this? Just signing at the top somewhere because there's not really any more. To we already signed here. Oh, that's just the present. Number. That's just the present. Number, yes. Thank you. That is the minutes for last meeting. Wow. All right. The next is <laughs> two meetings we had. One was on October 26th. Um, after our regular meeting, and I will take a motion to keep those minutes sealed. And that was for RSA 91A, colon 3, 2A, and B. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Initial on the seal, please. I have a weird reflection to be about that. <laughs> it's called blur. You can blur the background. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Looks like I'm sitting in a bubble here. Mm -hmm. And then the next set of minutes is from October 28th, and this is RSA 91-A, colon 32A and B. And this was discussion um, for the uh, highway department, and I believe we were going to not seal these minutes. Mm -hmm. So... I will um, unseal the envelope here. And this was the discussion to promote Gary Allen to uh, succeed Pat Henry. Uh, Pat Henry. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Brother, brother Pat Henry. Brother Pat Henry. <laughs> That's good. I love it when these were recorded too, because I get Pat <laughs> Kelly. Who is Pat Henry? Aren't you guys related <laughs> some way anyway? Well, Pat Henry. Yeah, they're related. They are sure. inseparable. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Cousin Pat. Cousin Pat. Pat Kelly. Um, boy, how embarrassing. Right. Um, so, uh, again, Pat, thanks for all of your service. Yeah, well, and um, exactly. when you get new business cards, let me know. I'll approve the spelling of your name. Um, and also for Gary for his uh, promotion. So, I will take a motion to approve the minutes for It'll that It'll make that motion to approve those minutes. All wonderful things in them. <laughs> Oh. Too many minutes to approve. And uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Let's move on to <coughs> agenda items. Yeah. All right. All right. Our first agenda item is 
actually going to be moved up. So it's the fire truck purchase. Um, uh oh. Um, Ed Harvey is trying to get on. Is he? Are you, able to you know what? He was trying to get on, and now I started the meeting late, and I'm not sure why he's not allowed to join now. So if I'll, you can try I'll, to get back on now. Yeah, I'll talk to him. Okay, okay, thank you. I was actually going to. Okay. Try to call. Okay, thank you. So, um,. We'll do. Okay, actually, before you step up, Jay, one more thing. We have minutes from a non-public that we just had, and we are going to um, vote not to seal these minutes. And these were to award a $1,000 bonus to Emily Denson for going above and beyond in your role and because um, in your role as the emergency management director and we really approve all of the things that you do all the time to keep us up to date etc and the money was in your budget and we really thought you deserved it so we're voting to keep the minutes unsealed and the check is in the mail <laughs> <laughs> all in favor can i have a motion to accept these minutes Make a motion to accept those. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry yes. Christmas. Merry Christmas. All in favor. Aye. Aye. And um, <laughs> Peter, that's Emily's money, not yeah. yours. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. <laughs> Thank you again. All right. Now we can talk about Whee! the fire truck. So the last we had talked, we had discussed um, the cost and also um, a lease option, and we have approximately four hundred and sixty thousand dollars in the four eighty four sixty or four eighty in the um, expendable trust fund, and the truck is going to come in around one hundred and sixty thousand above that. So yeah. we don't have the uh, funds in our hands right now, but what we want to do is try to order the truck because of the cost savings we can have by ordering it now and the fact that we don't have to pay for it for probably 15 to 16 months yeah. out. <clears throat> so we could potentially have the funds if we continue to contribute $80,000 a year into the expendable trust fund. So that's why we're sitting here. So talk to me about price, et cetera. Um. Well, we're waiting on one price, which we're waiting on one price. Um, we got six forty from one and two ten from another. The price I'm waiting on, I expect to be more than the six forty. Mm -hmm. Six actually, it's. Actually, six thirty-six. So, so the place that I'm waiting on, it's <coughs> probably definitely going to be more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be in the middle. So that's where we're at for numbers. So, as which far is good. The this the six thirty-six is good till twentieth mm -hmm. before the, there's a thirty. Six thirty-nine thousand dollar increase on the twentieth. Twentieth of yeah. November. Um, so prices are changing daily. Right, and and the thought process from how to approve the order now is that we could make a motion if we approve this to order the order the vehicle, and if there is any. Um, shortfall or if the town doesn't agree to fund the truck over the next two years we could enter into a lease which would have to go to a town vote but approval to order the truck does not have to go to a town vote we can do that as selectmen so um, just for the record it probably be if we wait till March it'll probably be anyways from 40, it'll be 50, 60 grand more than mm -hmm. today, this week. So we're trying to save 60,000 by ordering the vehicle now, and we can do that without having to put any money down up front, and we're not signing a lease, we're not signing any paperwork, as we're far as we're committing to the order. Committing to the order, by committing to the lease, you're committing to the order. Right. 
Now, what happens if we get voted down, though, if something happens and, <coughs> and you know, the economy a, goes to there's hell? There's an out clause on the lease. How's so we're not committed. I have information from uh, Carol Searcy with, with MLC Finance, and I spoke to her, and she sent me some documentation, um, and I'll read it. It talks about non-appropriation. So the lessee is obligated only to pay periodic premium, sorry, pay, pay periodic premium payments under the agreement as may lawfully be made from funds budgeted and appropriated for that purpose during the lessee's then current budget year. Should lessee fail to budget, appropriate, or otherwise make available funds to pay rental payments following the then current original or renewal term, this agreement shall be deemed terminated at the end of the then current original or renewal term. So, and there's more that goes on, but basically it's an out clause that if the funds are not available, we are not committing to the purchase of it. Since we would never take possess, possession of the vehicle unless funds were approved, then there's nothing, there's no if transaction. The, if the lease within the regular budget isn't approved. Right. Because you're, you're basically, if you do approve the lease right now, you're basically purchasing the truck. So, you mm -hmm. just... Technically, we're not paying for it because we're not getting the delivery of it for another year and a half. Um, so the, the lease would be in the regular yearly budget that the town's people vote. Would we be making payments starting day one? or When you take possession you of the truck. Possession of the truck. But you can also pay off the truck if we used our the expendable trust funds we could pay off the vehicle in full we could borrow some of it and and there's a lot of flexibility within that lease um, to either pay for part of it or yeah. finance and finance part of it or either or either pay it it's no different than the, the backhoe when, when the town bought the backhoe in 09 they basically did a four-year lease that four year lease because they didn't have the money to buy it, but they needed it. So they decided to buy it on a lease purchase. Mm -hmm. So the lease was for the four years, the lease was just in the regular yearly budget. And that's called an annually appropriated lease. Just so it, it doesn't have to be. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with time. waiting until March. It's just the money side of it, the big, the big savings. Yeah, well, yeah. Man, that's <laughs> substantial. It's substantial. With the mark, I think one of the key things for the public is the unstable market right now is what's making specialty truck purchases, the price of aluminum, and all this specialty stuff, and parts are sitting out in the ocean off the port of LA waiting. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's really messed up. up. I just wonder if that's going to cause delays on, the, on you know, years down the road, really. I mean, not just months, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. Even if we get into the lease, it may not be available for three years. Right. But we're not committing to anything. Yeah. Like and, and it's more about, it's, we don't have to have the truck, like, in six months or a mm -hmm. year or even a year and a half. That, that doesn't right. matter. Um, it's just, it's all about the saving the money. Right, right. Thoughts? Questions? Um, no, I just, it's, for me, it's kind of a coincidence that, you know, we're getting this new truck, and I was here for the one 30 years ago when we got it, when Andy Green was the fire chief, okay? Uh, so I can't, yeah, I, I just I, restarted it. Sorry. Okay. I just want to say, I think that it, it's a great idea. You know, we should do it, try and save the money. I have just one concern, and, you know, maybe it doesn't mean anything, but this truck is four feet longer than the room we have in the fire department, in the fire station, as it is now. Yeah, it's at three feet. So the right. the intent is the first bay closest that way mm -hmm. will open up the wall and make it so it backs up a little farther for a temporary solution to the building issues down the road. Um, but that's so that's right. So you've got to kind it's of gonna get work. in, it, it'll be tight just like everything there. <laughs> um, but it'll it'll get in, and that's a pretty minimal cost that I can do right within my budget. I've got quotes, and um, getting the hole in the wall is a pretty it's within my budget. So, is that something Gary can help with that? Is that um, is that it could you? help some of it? Um, 
I, I had basically between a couple contractors, it's not an expensive deal. That's noisy, I see. Okay. It's, it's just a matter of basically, <clears throat> the, the Quiet Apartment Association four years ago when they started on this paid for an engineering study from Bergeron down across from Shula Park, that Bergeron. Mm -hmm. They did an engineering study to make sure it was okay to cut the wall. Yeah. wall. So we have that engineering study. Um, so that the association paid for that to be done. Um, so, so it's all okay. okay. What about the present value of the truck we have, assuming that we got it? Um, there are Hopefully, several museums looking at it. It, yeah. should be, it should be fair. I think it's fairly high. Um, depends on the market, depends who's looking, if anybody, any local towns up north need a truck like that with a, and have a smaller budget. Um, it, there's a lot of things you could do with it unless the town wanted to keep it for the highway department for a water truck. Something like that, uh, be good for that. Our biggest issue is the driving of it, you know, right. automatic. Right. Uh, that's our probably biggest issue. Can you get an estimate on the truck that we have now, you know, pointing to John's question about what the value of it might be? Just, I'm just curious. It's, it's hard to get an estimate on that. I mean, trade in, mm -mm. nobody, they buy a truck, companies don't take really, if they do, it's not nah, John's price. Mm -hmm. Uh, the last one we did was 26000 when we sold it, and this one I would expect a lot more. Um, I mean, um, I talked to somebody, actually somebody just stopped the other day um, and asked about it. He had stopped before, and I, he does truck, buys trucks and cuts them up or sells them and stuff. And uh, he thought 50 or 60, which might be a little high. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's got, I mean, it'd make a really good dump truck. It'd make a really good logging truck. Um, it'd make a small town somewhere even smaller than us that, you know, has more than main type of thing where they've got a lot of truck leaders that can drive a standard and make them a good truck. Uh, so between, I would expect between 30 and 50 grand. The other truck was a little more difficult because it was a single axle instead of tandem axle. No, it didn't bring quite as much money. Any got other thoughts? Excuse me for one second. I'm having trouble, technical difficulties. I think you might have to start a new. I'm, I'm d sending him a link right okay, now. Thank you. So. Okay. Okay. Thoughts. Um, this is in our in our budget to order in two years, so um, we're definitely ahead of the game on it that way. And saving of sixty thousand is a really good sounding thing. Yeah. How much have we been putting in each year? Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. So we need to do it two. We more. used to do a hundred, right. and uh, John probably remembers mm -hmm. they changed it from a hundred to eighty, which set us back, or we would have had all the money. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what kind of discussion that is for budget season to bring it back to 100 or not. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> Once we get final pricing, we can maybe put that into the Warren article for the um, you know, final. But I will accept a motion if we want to move forward to order the truck. We'll make that motion to order this new fire truck or our fire department. Okay. Release agreement. I will second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you, Jay. So, the sales, one of the, like the, if we end up going with this particular one, the sales agreement is no different than the last truck we bought. Absolutely identical. Mm -hmm. uh, if we can, uh, another week, I'll give the other company another week or so. And then it's just a matter of, yeah, just I don't let the I can, I can sign lapse. it just as well as you can sign it or whoever, it doesn't really matter who signs it. Mm -hmm. It's just an order anyway. Um, so, unless you absolutely want to sign it, it's up to you. You can sign okay. it. All right, so the, the intent is to decide 
and I can let you guys know by email if that's mm -hmm. what you want, which one we went with. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think it would be important to just have the specs. So I guess the, there's no meeting the 20th or 21st. Correct. So, right. And I get it in order to maintain this this price on this truck, which I think is the cheapest, the cheapest, cheapest anyway. Mm -hmm. um, we just I just gotta get it to them before the 19th, 20th. And Jay, was I remembering correct that by buying this truck, it's also going to allow you to not have to order some of the wide hose? Correct. Truck so, is coming with large diameter hose, so we don't have to. We can. We've got some other large diameter hose that's going to need replacement, but doesn't have to happen immediately like we were going to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's coming with ladders and a few other things. So our special equipment, we're in, it's helping us yeah. down the road. So that's another. That's another positive point on. Um, yeah, saving more money yeah. down the road. It's the first truck that's coming equipped since 72. Fully, pretty oh, much fully, <laughs> fully equipped. All right, fantastic. Thank you. Okay. And if you, yeah, if you need me for anything on the paperwork or, the you guys, or whatever. Pat and Peter came as moral yes. support. Moral support. We moral. Support. I mean, there's been a lot of work done, I mean, especially over the last two years. I mean, yeah. it's not been. I mean, we've, we've kind of fast tracked it just because of the way that all of the, the equipment is these days. We did the same thing for the same reason on the lowers. Mm -hmm. There was there was a guaranteed two price increases on right. that. So, and I think more than likely there would be two price increases on the at least. Well, it's not only that; it's the lead time too. You know, yeah, we're right. talking about fifteen to sixteen months of a lead time on ordering right. a truck. So it right. just it really it went makes from one hundred and ten days to now it's one hundred and fifty-five. Or we got one hundred and ten yeah. weeks to one hundred and fifty-five. Yeah. Weeks of building. The, the lower price of the truck at, at this yeah. point with the bids that we have is actually the truck that oh, yeah. the officers yeah. and most of the members. Uh, have wanted to do so they um, it's our tech for trucks yeah. as well to, to meet the department and to meet uh, yeah. what we want to have what we want to use yeah. oh, yeah. so all right should be good. great thanks guys we're really happy we can move this on all right <laughs> all right thanks guys um, the next item on the agenda is the chamber Christmas tree request and uh, so we had talked about the old tree that was planted many years ago and whether or not it was alive or not alive. And it just has a disease that Gary Spears is gonna work with Jay and taking care of it to make sure we can salvage that tree hopefully. But also Kathleen still wants to bring, Kathleen from the Chamber of Commerce still wants to bring in the 14 foot um, uh, Christmas tree this year and she'll have it professionally put up the week before Thanksgiving and have it taken down January 17th or as close to that date as possible so um, she's looking for our approval to do that and I think that's a great idea because it's always nice to have a pretty pretty tree in the center there yeah. so since we're not expending any money I don't think we have to vote on it we just have to let her know that we approve any problems with that yeah. perfect and I'm glad we're saving the tree yeah, all right, make sure you just you hook up with Gary on making sure. Oh, yeah, okay. You guys, if he's going to be the new road guy or property maintenance guy, that he knows about it, but yeah. he definitely should have a she discussion has given us, with him about it. Right, you shouldn't give us a date or anything like that. Just uh, before, week before, before Thanksgiving. Before Thanksgiving. All right, so I'll give it Yeah, yeah. Good. All right, fantastic. Okay, um, the next item is the new tax rate. Um, so the tax rate in the town will be going up from $10.99 to $11.27. And this is made up of a few different components, obviously. Um, the municipal rate is going up, uh, sorry, down from $4.50 to $4.24. The county rate is going from 116 down to 111. The local rate, however, is going up from 363 to $4.08, and the state rate is going from $1.70 to $1.84. So all of those add up to a 28 cent increase. 
which is actually still the lowest municipal rate it's been since 2014. Um, most of the rate is due to the school increase. So um, the total tax rate is the same as it was in 2016. We are using $250,000 of the um, general fund balance. And we, were, we talked about that and decided to do that um, as a very conservative amount. If we went into the, into the rate more and tried to keep our tax rate down, <coughs> we could be um, running up against inflation and we're really, we would be reducing our tax rate more, but we would be covering a lot of the increase from the school's increase and we really didn't wanna do that. So um, we're planning on inflation hitting and we need to have those funds in the um, general fund also to cover any future costs that we are anticipating are gonna be higher. Does anybody have any questions about the tax rate? Crowd, don't see any hands being raised out there. And how much in surplus, just for the record? Left after this? That is... 1,000,000. And that's after we put after the 250. After we use the 250. So we have that much in surplus. Correct. All right. We have to make a motion, or did we already vote on this? <coughs> I think we should make a motion. I think we should make a motion on this one. So I will uh, accept a motion to accept the new tax rate of $4.24 for the municipal rate, bringing our total tax rate to $11.27. I will make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. And I don't know if you guys saw the um, tax rate went up 64 cents in Conway, I think. <laughs> it was a hefty increase there, too. So. All right. Miss Emily, COVID policy number. Eight thousand four hundred and twenty. <laughs> so you earned your money now. <laughs> 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 so um, the two thousand and fourteen, you submitted a new municipal employee guidance and policy on November 9th, and that's what we're reviewing yeah. and going over. So yeah, I think the, the biggest difference um, as things continue to evolve is the fact that. You, you do need to know vaccination status of employees mm -hmm. because of the different ways that you have to quarantine um, or basically the precautions you need to take whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. so, um, and the, again, the New York Municipal Association was really helpful and forwarded that additional information um, to you all through you for that. So. And this isn't something that has to be public knowledge. It's just that for personnel reasons, we need to know it in the office. So when we ask someone to quarantine or not quarantine, we know. What exactly. And I think the bigger thing in talking with, um, with Julie Atwell was then the compensation for employees. How are you going to handle, you know, sick time, mm -hmm. all that? And that's, that was not my thing. I just provided okay. information. Um, but I think, I think at the beginning of COVID, there were certain... Um, appropriations that were made from different government organizations to pay for some of sick time, correct? Well, that's, I'm not quite, yeah, I'm not quite sure if some gopher funds were available and, and some <clears throat> things like that. I know one of the big challenges was if people were traveling and mm -hmm. was it, you know, and then that then tied into the travel guidance and then you know, asking people to not travel was a big thing early on. Right. You know, to not, not take a chance. So, so as we continue to move through this, it's just, you know, the recommendations continue to stay the same, get vaccinated, and ask and mm -hmm. and everything else. But I think um, I always like to have the references within the policy right. to the actual sites on DHHS that have the information because that continues to change. Mm -hmm. And always looking at the effective date of those, of those different recommendations. Right. They change as well, so. Any questions? No. 
questions? I will Pocahontas take... back then. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hi, Peter. Sorry. Oh, you're an aunt. Got his up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I just not to throw it. Maybe you thought of this right. Matter management director. Um, does this include fire employee? Because they are employees of the town, and so we're going to need to get that roster probably. So yes. At, at some point. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. It's for yeah, all town right. employees. Yeah. We'll relay that to the chief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please. Has that has these policies been shared with you before? No. All the different policies. So we'll need to be able to. We'll need to have to develop a list. We should probably do that because for confidentiality reasons. Right. Well, we need to the department heads. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll mention it to the chief. Then. Um. Yeah. I think it. Again, it says there, employees shall not notify the department heads regarding any possible symptoms or exposure. Um, so, of course, we'll be notified of employee vaccination status in order to determine these steps. So, it was something, some towns are actually having that vaccination status within employee records. Mm -hmm. But it is, I mean, with a volunteer, you know, yes. that's definitely not going to take But if there's an exposure, knowing the vaccination status is clear. Right. Um. That's something, Julie, maybe you and Julie and I can coordinate getting records of, and or you yeah. guys can, yeah. and then just keeping a spreadsheet or an update of whatever. Okay. okay. I will take a motion to approve, if there are no other comments, I will take a motion to approve the new COVID-19 Municipal Employee Guidance and Policies revised date of November 9th, 2021. Make a motion to accept that information. What version is this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I second. <laughs> All in favor? Uh, uh, Aye. Thank you again, Emily. Really, it's um, good information. Lots of lots of stuff. All right. The next agenda item is our highway department personnel, um, and this is really an update. Uh, also, following up for the minutes that we had. So Gary has been promoted. Gary Allen has been promoted to our new. Um, Highway Department road agent, and we have an opening for a driver full time, um, so not just seasonal. I know we posted it in the Conway Daily Sun, and I don't believe we got any applicants. Julie, anything that no, you know? No. And then New Hampshire Municipal yeah. also. We haven't received anything. Nothing. So I would encourage people to share it among friends, family, uh, Facebook pages, LinkedIn pages, anything. If anyone needs a copy of the ad or a um, print or anything like that, um, let anybody in the office know or me. And also, uh, since we aren't getting any applicants, um, <laughs> we can talk about possibly hiring part-time or whatever, but we need to make sure we get some um, help. Pat and Jay definitely said they'd help step in, but uh, we want to make sure we get somebody. And I did speak to Gary Allen, um, and he feels comfortable with what he has now with three, mm -hmm. because he does know that there's help available if he needs right. it. But right now, he said there's no reason to panic about it. Yeah. I think we might have to look at some other alternatives too, like even looking at some of the, um, I, this sounds weird, but trucking schools or even high schools um, <coughs> uh, to see about some recruiting because there are a lot of uh, young people that may need jobs and have experience driving or want to learn how to drive. So anything we can do to think out of the box on how to get employees would be, would be you know, any suggestions would be helpful. Actually, so. if somebody who needs plowing for their own driveway and they can provide housing for this person. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> Sleep in your truck. No. Seriously. I, I hear you. Yeah. When I had another person call me asking for plowing help, I said, well, you could house. Yes. <laughs> I know. That's yeah. such a problem. But yeah, any uh, suggestions or uh, feedback or employees uh, that have friends or family that want to drive really nice plow trucks that we have. Pass it on. All right, but we're really um, thrilled to be, have been able to promote Gary to um, this position too and find somebody within that could come in. So that was a great, great, great thing to do. Yeah, fortunately. All right, yeah, the next agenda item is the 2021 Equalization Municipal Assessment Data Certificate. And this is just requiring signature. Um, and is there anything else I need to say about the we, the other side? 
Certify that the assessment and sales information provided by us on the New Hampshire Mosaic Equalization System has been thoroughly reviewed by this board and is complete and accurate to the best of our knowledge. And um, the company that does our reevaluation work is Northtown Associates, and they have done that for many, many years, correct? Mm -hmm. So I will take a motion to approve this and sign. I will make that motion. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye, aye. aye. Sign it. is our pending Valley Crossroad Bridge. I believe we still have no update and I don't even know what the status is and I've had a couple people ask me so I will get back in touch with, um, Kevin, have you heard anything else? I know you not really involved in it, but nothing. So I'll touch base again with um, probably Burr and find out what the, what the next step is on that because I know we had the two drawings with and without trusses and we talked about that in length We'll find out where we're going from there. So, to be continued. All right, here is a copy for you. And a copy for you for our short-term rental um, information. We have no new applications, but we do have one violation notice. Um, Dormer at 61U2 on Eastfield Road was approved in July that 2021 for a three bedroom with eight people max. And since then they have changed their advertising to three bedroom sleeps 11. So we will be sending out a violation notice if I can have a motion to do so. I can make that motion to send a violation notice for um, the Dormer uh, STR. A uh, second. All in favor. All right. Aye. Aye. All right, and then on the pending list, we have Carter Notch Inn. We did receive their conditional use permit through the planning board, so that is in process there. That will be reviewed at their next meeting and, and subsequently reviewed by us. And the same with the Schaffner conditional use permit. Um, we had filed a violation notice. They did submit their conditional use permit, which will be reviewed at the planning board meeting on the 18th. The sec next one is the NANI, uh, which we filed a violation notice, I believe, or notification, and they did contact the office and they'll be submitting their conditional use permit as well. So the last um, issue that we have is the complaint that we discussed at the last meeting that was um, filed against the property at 7 Balsam Drive, owner Ed Harvey, and Ed is on the call right now, so I will um, talk about what I found out first. Um, I'm sorry, I need, we need to sign this. Also. Okay, so um, I said that I would acquire a copy of the police report from the incident because the police were involved. This is the um, notification. And I did so. So on the conditional use permit, there is a notification that the fireworks ordinance was adopted at the 2021 annual town meeting and that lodgers and short-term renters are supposed to be provided with a copy of the ordinance and adhere to that ordinance. It was um, noted that a, a um, warning was issued for the fireworks so um, the police officer told the tenant about the fireworks ordinance and a warning for fireworks use and disturbance was issued. So even though the police handled that part of it, it still is a violation of the ordinance that the fireworks ordinance was violated. Does that make sense? Sure. Um, Based on that and the fact that the police were called and the part that this was a um, something against a conditional use permit, then I would recommend that a violation notice 
be filed against the owner of the short-term rental. Any thoughts on your end on that? I think you're doing the right thing. Who called the police? Was, uh, uh, Phil called? Actually, um, Phil called the police, but I believe that Ed Harvey um, called the police. And I'm following up on this. So there were two, two visits by the police. The first one was when Phil Spinney called them, and the second one was when Ed Harvey called the police because Phil was... Um, verbally yelling at them. After the first call from Phil Spinney, it was um, more of a disturbance. And then when Mr. Harvey called the police and figured out that uh, Mr. Spinney was yelling at his tenants, uh, the resident or the renter at the time was told that his grandson had set off some kind of fireworks and the police officer told him about the fireworks ordinance and that's when he issued a warning. So it was a back and forth between the two parties, but um, the warning was that there were fireworks. No mentioning of snaps or... No, like there was no um, mention in the police report at all of whether or not there were, you know, was evidence of fireworks, there were no it wasn't mentioned whether they were legal or illegal fireworks as our ordinance goes, but a, war a warning was issued. Thoughts or, um, I ask for, yeah. Ed, did you want to speak to this? Yes, um, I think in this case, with the snaps being legal, no fireworks being found, and the records have the snaps. So far as I can tell, the warning was, do not light fireworks. It wasn't, you did this, stop doing it. It is just a, this is the ordinance, which they already knew. We had already called them, as is required. It is, it is a claim of someone that didn't call the police for quite some time, and then the police come up, they have a conversation with the only person left at the house, the only reason anyone was at the house was because of the verbal altercation that occurred. Otherwise, they'd all be in there. There were no fireworks down, and the officer told them not to let off fireworks. I, but there was clearly a snap. So it, I, I completely understand the conversation happening and saying, hey, either way, this is what it is and don't do it. But for any, could a ticket have been served? And then why is there a warning for me? Because basically mine's not really a warning, mine's a one, two, three strikes. If we were on strike two, am I getting a fine right now over someone heard pop and the police came up after some altercation and just told them not to light off fireworks? I, I'm just I'm just missing where where that really is. Phil says someone speeds down the street, what are the police going? Well, I think that's a little different, and I, there's nothing, there's no mention of whether or not it was, hold on a second, no mention of whether or not it was snaps. Um, Mr. DeRoche has said to the police officer that he was unaware about the ordinance and he was inside when it happened, and um, so the disturbance, you know, occurred. So, so to speak to the inability of anyone to be able to control this type of situation, you have a, a person who is the son of someone that rented the house. We have grandparents, parents, and the children. Six people total for a six-person house. He is aware of the ordinance, but he also doesn't have any fireworks on him. They buy the snaps earlier in the day. And who we dealt with was the grandparents. That's who rented the property. He doesn't know if there's any snaps. He wasn't there again. The police are not called when they're appropriately supposed to be. And now it's just, what are we going to do? If they come up at the time, they'll cause them appropriately, and that's an actual ad. The police come up and hear the snaps. If the police had come back up two hours later, I'm not saying they have to do this, but the snaps aren't there. I've got pictures of snaps, we've got conversations about the snaps, they're snaps. But it wasn't a part of this one person's situation. I, I, I think that's pretty reasonable. I, I just, everything growing up, everything I've ever done with my own kids, as 
child in Philly, not everybody knows that I have legal snacks. Grandma bought me for me. I did this. He's inside. If you want to issue it, you'll issue it. But that's, I'm basically being warned over something that's a legal snack. So what's the step going forward when these go on? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know that I I don't know that I have an answer for you on what happens moving forward. I don't want to belittle this, but I also um, think it's your responsibility as an owner of a short term rental and whether or not they knew about a fireworks ordinance or not. It is your responsibility to educate them to that. Do you have something that shows on your um, on your lease with your tenants that you have a link or copies to the ordinance or that they're present in your in your short-term rentals? Yes. Yes, I can provide those. But I, to date, have received no notice. Again, I'm on here because I read the public agenda. I don't have any contact or preparation, and I have not been asked for any of this stuff. You're just moving forward on someone called, said there was a firework. They had a conversation. They finished with, hey, don't do any fireworks. Fine. Moving on. Nothing else happens. That's not the same as fireworks went off, but the police let them off late. It is not the police saw someone speeding, pulled them over, gave them a lecture, and let them know they had a ticket. This is their showing up later. There is no evidence of fireworks. I do have evidence of snacks. And that's it. That's so you tell them that, that, and I was also told by the officer that if the meter finds snaps to be in violation of noise, then it can be. I, mean, I, I don't know what to do with that. Well, I'm not going to get into that conversation. And I also did tell you at the last meeting when we had this conversation that we were changing our policy so that you would receive and anyone would receive future notice of, of um, any violations or, or complaints that were filed. So I appreciate that you'll remember that, I, that we discussed that already. We did, but here I am. I had to cancel meetings to get, get on this. You know what, Ed, that's a responsibility of being a short-term rental owner. I'm gonna put you on hold for, hold on, hold on just a second. John, did you have a comment? I was curious, the police did write him up for a warning for fireworks. Correct. So I think if the police wrote them up for a warrant, they must have sufficient evidence that they had fireworks. Now, snaps, I know, are not fireworks under their, under their right. thing. So I mean, it must be, something must have been said in that conversation, which none of us had privy to, by the way. Right. That, that Hold on, Ed. Hold on, please. OK. Thank you. John? Uh, I'm, I said, I, I, to, for a warning to be issued by the police officer, he must be fairly confident that the fireworks were discussed and probably probably were used at that site. I don't I don't have any confidence that snaps were used. I mean whether it's evidence or not that you know you can't find the bottle rocket evidence now, that's for sure. Right. But again a police officer must have some reasonable understanding that if I'm gonna write a warning there must have been fireworks involved. So whatever conversation they had with the grandparents must have alluded to that. Mm -hmm. Well they referred to them as fireworks and there were snaps. Maybe. Whatever, but the police report says fireworks, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm basing my facts off right. of, because it's mm -hmm. an official police report. Mm -hmm. so. Ed, did you want to comment again? Yeah, I can just say that I spoke to the officer twice that week. It could have been snaps. That was it. That's how the conversation went with me. That once he knows there were snaps, he couldn't see them at the time because the party was gone, because the complainant never called the police. Then he gets up there, the person he's talking to is not who did the snaps, it's not part of the rest of the party. The snaps were there, I have evidence of the snaps. Somebody did not get called right away. There was no ticket being issued. The officer did not have anything other than Phil saying he saw something and, and told me as much. I don't know what to do with that. You know, it doesn't make the report. It's a bad report. That's, that's my, that's my, my opinion. So we'll deal with it in the appeal. 
Hát. I just don't, I'm, I'm basing it off the facts of the police report and I think a violation should be filed. That's my opinion. If um, you guys have an opinion, it obviously need, needs to be a majority vote to make a motion to file a uh, violation notice. Do we, I only ask, do we want to speak to the officer one more time about this difference between snaps and fireworks and what he thought? perhaps was happening? Um, we can, you know, you can do that just to, you, want. you know, but I don't want to hold up your motion. I'm just, just making sure it's that we have, it's time is on our side. I mean, it's not like we have any, you know, yeah. right now. But the if same. You, yeah, if you want to um, get more information here, and I guess in all fairness, if we're getting more information, then Ed should probably be able to submit some more information as well. I think that's fair. Sounds good to me. Ed, did you uh, have any other comments or do you want to get in touch with um, the office and you can submit what information you have? That sounds good. If I could know when it's coming up, I'll get in touch with the office. We don't have another meeting until um, December, so it would be December 14th, 14th at 3.30. All right, thank you very much. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, hi, Kevin. I just, Sorry. I just have a quick thank comment you. on that. Um, I mean, that's still a kind of a noise complaint because that's, you know, you can still create a noise, especially when you have, you know, a box of 50 and you start going, you know, one every five seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I've, I've talked to some of the people up there in that area who are full-time residents and, you know, we've had a rash of complaints down the road at another place, which they have taken care of. And I think we all remember that. Um, mm -hmm. So some of the short-term rental people have got a lot better. You know who's staying there, who's not, and everything else. Um, but you know, it's it, it's something every weekend that's on here, and you know they just a lot of the residents just don't. You know they they're sick and tired of pick up the phone and complaining, so they don't say anything. You know because they just can say, oh, you know, here they are complaining again. Mm -hmm. But you know all those lots up there are very small. They're all like a third of an acre. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on top of each other, uh, especially in the normal months. Um, but that was definitely, you know, police were called because of some kind of noise. I mean, it was fireworks or a lot of voices, but you know, like I said, you get a box of 50 of those snaps and you're throwing them. Mm -hmm. You know, you live across the street, you don't want to be hearing that. Yeah. I know it's not in the ordinance, but it, it kind of falls under the noise ordinance, too. Mm -hmm. Um, can, I, can, I, can I know who's talking right now? I'm sorry, that's Kevin Bennett. He's our building inspector. Right. Um, I, it was the afternoon. I don't know where this conversation is going farther about who's complaining about what. I, I really, I want to come in for the other, the other property. What complaint has been filed and was not found on camera to be erroneous? Why? Okay. why you know what, Ed, I, I appreciate your um, comment that we're just listening to Kevin Bennett's pub, public comment on this, so thank you. All in all, though, Kevin, we haven't had a lot of written complaints. I know that some people may be under the breath saying, yeah, it's loud or whatever, but typically it has gotten better. Um, you know, I feel badly for Ed and anybody else who rents to uh, a family that you know maybe doesn't Disregard. follow the rules that's really un not under his control although he is the owner he's responsible that's that's the issue we're dealing with um, you know it, it'd be nice if everybody came up here and behaved properly but we know that doesn't happen all the time and 
it puts the owner in a tough spot. I mean, he's the, he or she is the one's going to get tagged for it. Um, you know, and again, it's it's pretty high, hard to bet everybody that comes up here. Um, you know, you can rent to a nice nice old little old lady and all of a sudden there's a frat party in there. Um, you know, that's, that can happen. And, you know, it, it is a case by case basis. Fortunately, we don't get many. Um, you know, and they haven't, they haven't really been too many issues. Um, but when they are, they're kind of, they're tough to decide on. There's no doubt about it. We don't want to take away people's potential livelihood, but in the same token, we want people to live in a little peace and quiet up here. You know, there's no doubt about it. It's a fine line to walk. Right. All right, uh, we will find out more from the police report details and put it onto the December 14th agenda. Sounds good. All right. Uh, any other, uh, any issues with building and driveway permits? Uh, Evan. I just want to bring up, we, um, I guess two Sundays there we had all that rain. And I know we had two sites that they've been working on, ones that totally clear cut. They took every tree except three down on a 1.3 acre lot. Ooh. And the other, the other lot was a five acre lot and a good portion of the trees are down. So anyway, the first lot I went to wasn't bad. Um, I was surprised. Um, there was no runoff or anything like that. But the mm -hmm. second site was a total disaster area. I mean, there was a river coming down the middle of the road. So wow. I, I did it. it Sent it to Burr, I said, Burr, we need to meet next week. So sure enough, he came up this week. Um, we walked both sites. Um, the second site, which was the five acre uh, site, um, there's four major issues there. Um, basically, we just want them to, you know, fix it for this, you know, the coming up winter into, into spring until they start working on it again. Mm -hmm. So I talked to the owner multiple times, um, can't get a hold of the contractor. Uh, contractors um, know not to deal with anything with erosion. It's just one of those guys who they don't care what's going on. So, mm -hmm. so I get to call the owner again. I, I guess he's trying to try to find a contractor to put up silk fence, hay bales, you know, seed, maybe um, uh, wood chips. It's a little late to hide your seed in the season now. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we're, we're, we're watching it and, uh, you know, I'll keep you updated. Is that Middle Mountain, Kevin? That is correct. Okay. Yep. Hmm. And I know the owner had told Pat at some point a few weeks ago that he was aware of the situation there and that he was going to try and do, so he would do something about it. He's very good. But, yeah, yeah okay. but just trying to find someone to do the actual thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And, and then the having the rain again. The guy who's doing the work, he can't get a hold of. And I know who it is, and I know he's working everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess if he can find him on a job, the best, best yeah. thing to do is find him on a job and bring him, get him up there. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Yep. Um, upcoming meetings. So our next meeting for November 23rd is going to be canceled. Uh, so everybody have a nice Thanksgiving holiday and enjoy it. And then we have December 14th and December 28th. There will be a Zoom link for both of those meetings. And uh, January 11th is the meeting after that. And then our January 25th meeting is going to be followed by the Selectman's meeting. Uh, the budget hearing, sorry. January 25th, Selectman's meeting. Budget hearing will be following that meeting. Um, and then the second budget hearing will follow the selectmen's meeting on February 1st. Um, so that will all be in the minutes and following that. The other thing that I want to mention is that the Bartlett Jackson Ambulance Committee is having a meeting with the Town of Bartlett selectmen on November 17th at 2.30. 2.30 was it or 3.30? 2.30. 2.30 before the Bartlett Selectman's meeting and that will be at the Town of Bartlett's office. And I know you won't be able to make it, but you will be there. So uh, well, we'll probably be talking about budgets for the Bartlett Jackson Ambulance at that meeting. And um, the other informational session we had was a um, at the fire station last Saturday, we had a, bud, um, a public information session and we have information that will be on our website and uh, the fire department's website and available in the town office and at the fire station that talks about um, the condition of the current fire station, some of the deficiencies, 
and some of the recommendations for a proposed new fire station. So that will be um, that will be helpful to anyone that wants to look into that. And that will probably be on our December 14th agenda. So just noting, noting that. Um, anything else? John? Frank? No. I will take a motion. Well, oh, uh, sorry. Oh, I'm comment. sorry. I, t I last, last skipped minute, over public comment. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Hi Tom. Tom. Hi, Frank. Um, I couldn't get into the Zoom meeting from home, so I, oh. I'm here. Sorry. But, um, at, I could either call you all individually, or can you give me a wrap on the fires truck discussion I missed? That's what I was asking. Yes. So, fire, and I can send you the Zoom recording as well if you want that. But um, for the fire, fire truck purchase, we had allocated for a fire truck to be replaced in two years. We decided to move on ordering the truck tonight because of a potential minimum $60,000 increase in price and a probably 15 to 18 month lead time on getting the truck. So we will have, um, we have enough in our uh, expendable trust fund for that fire truck for um, if yep. we commit to the next two years of funding consistent with what it has been. We're not committing any funds to it today. We committed to ordering to ordering it. Mm -hmm. If the town, it, oh, if the town doesn't, it, to a lease, yes, for a lease. Okay. a lease. If the town doesn't commit to the additional funding, then we will go into a lease for the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And the sixty thousand because of the, just the, what's happening everywhere in terms mm -hmm. of absolutely. Isn't that something? And that's what we know today so i would imagine by the time 16 to 18 months comes it'll be a lot more than sixty thousand dollars more a lot more than sixty thousand dollars in addition to what we're spending today okay so yes thank, thank you i appreciate you being here and i well, nice to yeah <laughs> <laughs> emily so i just wanted to let you all know um fema has released their assistance to firefighter grants um, applications yesterday. Mm -hmm. And we, the Jackson Fire Department, is looking at partnering with Bartlett Fire Department in providing, in submitting a regional application. Um, we have heard that you know we might have some better um, success in filing a regional ap application, showing that um, you know, the mutual aid and cooperation between the two. Um, there is a 5% cash match that will be required um, on the amount of money that is being um, requested for. And what we're going for, at least specific to Jackson, is um, Airpac's, what is it, self-contained breathing apparatus. Mm -hmm. Not scuba, it's the above water. Scuba. <laughs> um, but we will, need, we will need to create um, a memorandum of understanding between the two towns. Um, and there's a lot of different accounting info that needs to happen, but I just wanted to give you all the heads up on that. And I don't know if um, Jeff Courier has given the Bartlett Select Board a heads up on that. Um, we'll be meeting with Pete and Jay and Jeff um, tomorrow morning. The deadline for this um, application to be submitted is December 17th. Um, so I thought, wow, I better tell you that today. Yes, <laughs> good job. Good so, job. Um, and so, each air pack is like ten grand, right? And around that, yeah. Actually, it's like eight thousand or yeah. so. And one of the things is that we have to go with the same manufacturer, you know, right? It's all based on that mutual aid or mutual aid. Um, the other component to it is training. So working with with PJ and just sort of how many firefighters we have um, trained to be able to use it. And then um, it also is based on the number of seats um, that you have. You can't, you know, request twenty if you only seats have in them. the fire trucks, not seats in the seats. Gotcha. Seats in the fire trucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Although there is some, and there's a webinar last night. There are some additional um, questions that we can ask them. If it's a, it's technically we have combination fire departments because we have some paid staff, some volunteer on call staff. Um, but if volunteers respond in their cars, that was something that was going to be brought up. But um, Jimmy Emery um, is also going to be helping on this, on this effort. So, um, so we'll see how it goes. But I'll keep you all posted. There was some discussion. Did you want to speak to no, that? I would just say that we're, you know, ballpark, we'll be looking at about $120,000. Mm -hmm. will be our 
will be our return on that. So looking at a five percent match for that, that's a pretty good return on yeah. investment. Whether it comes from special equipment or the association, we're we're pretty confident we can cover that cover that cost. And so to to Pete's point, that idea of so you know how's Bartlett with their um, ability to cover that, um, and in terms of the person. You know, there has to be only one person who makes the application, and right now I'm, I'm willing to be that go-to. I've been in touch with um, Julie Atwell. You know, we need to have all these, you know, our EIN numbers, the Dunn's numbers, the SAM, all those accounts are set to go from what I understand for Jackson, but that's part of the discussion tomorrow with Bartlett. Are you guys up to speed on all that and then some of the reporting and stuff like that? Um, so, so we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. Is the 5% shared between the two towns, or is it 5% each town? No, I would take 5% for our year yeah. and 5% for their year, okay. right? So that's what I do want to make sure, though, that as, you know, if we are submitting the application, you're still responsible for your 5%. Right. Because <laughs> I would think that they have more seats than we do? No, or not really. They'll, they'll, because okay. it's a combination of trained people and available spots that you can put the, the equipment. Right. I imagine there's a probably be around the same, okay. um, but it's really, I, mean, I can't overstate how important it is for us to be on the, with the same gear because when you do get into a mutual aid situation on a multiple call, I've gone to Bartlett calls many times and grabbed their equipment, so having the same stuff mm -hmm. is really, really important. It doesn't matter what it is, just so long as it's the same. Just make sure you put it back on our truck. When well, we <laughs> the we paint all our stuff fuchsia. <laughs> Yeah. That's when we got such a good deal on the truck, we're well, getting a purple one. Paint, too, so. <laughs> Perfect. Well, good luck. I yeah, really, thank really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. we'll see Especially for the cost of those and the, what they provide. Really? So. Yeah. Any other public comment? I will take a motion to... To uh, no, we right. did our we did our um, we're all done. Done public. Thanks, so Tom. I will take a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn. I'll, I'll second that. All in favor. Aye aye. Aye.